Welcome biologists, this is part two of specification point F. In the first part we had a look at ventilation and gas exchange within bony fish and we're now going to move on to how this works within insects. So the key thing here with insects is that they have these small little openings on the side of their body called spiracles. And spiracles allow the diffusion of oxygen into the organism and carbon dioxide out of the organism. This is another example, another picture where you can visually see them on the side of, I think this is a caterpillar. They're just small openings and these openings can open and close because if they're permanently open, um, the insect will lose too much water and the, the insect will dry out, which it obviously doesn't want to occur because it will die. Um, so here is an, an image that if you cut through the insects. You can see the spiracle here on the outside leading to the opening, but you can see that this spiracle leads to a trachea and the trachea then leads into several tracheoles. And these tracheoles spread all over the body of the organism, taking the oxygen to where it's needed, um, usually towards muscles for aerobic respiration to create ATP for muscle contraction. Now here's a nice image where you can see the, the oxygen will diffuse into the spiracle along the trachea and then into the tracheoles up to the muscle fibres to be used for aerobic respiration to generate ATP. And you can see that carbon dioxide is released. It diffuses out of the spiracles into the air on the outside of the organism. So that's how the spiracles work. Now you need to be aware of this thing called tracheal fluid, which as you can see here, during a rest, this tracheal fluid is present within the tracheoles in the muscles. So these, these boxes here are the muscles. Now, as an organism undergoes re aerobic respiration due to muscle contraction, so the more muscle contraction that occurs with it in the insect, the more aerobic respiration will take place. And the more aerobic respiration will take place, the more likely it will be that the organism needs to switch from aerobic to anaerobic respiration because it'll run out of oxygen availability. If the organism switches to anaerobic respiration, it means that the insect is going to be producing lactic acid, which is going to reduce the pH of the cells in the surrounding muscle tissue. So as a result, the fluid will move from the tracheoles into the surrounding muscle tissue via osmosis because of the lactic acid buildup in the muscle tissues. Now, as a result of the tracheal fluid moving from the tracheoles to the muscle cells in an active tissue so this is a, a muscle that's undergoing a lot of aerobic respiration and therefore then switch to anaerobic respiration because it's very active this tracheal fluid has moved into the muscle fibers surrounding the tracheoles and this means that more oxygen can diffuse further into the muscle fibers and therefore there would be more oxygen available for aerobic respiration so that's one thing you need to know about tracheal fluid also, I have seen in some insects that they have an air reserve, which I've never seen on an exam question, but you do need to be aware that it could be present within an organism. And as it sounds, it is an air reserve. It's where air can be stored in case the organism needs to close its spiracles because it's maybe a hot day. It doesn't want to lose too much water through those spiracles. But also the insect can help to move air around the body due to jumping or movement that it would naturally do in a, in a normal day. And through moving, it helps to change the volume of the body cavity and therefore causes change within the pressure, helping air to be drawn in and out through these spiracles. So that's how um, gas exchange occurs within insects. I'm just going to quickly go over how dissections would occur between an insect and also a fish. Now, the key thing here is that in an insect, in order to see the spiracles here that align the abdomen, you have to remove the exoskeleton to be able to actually see the spiracles. Whereas in a fish, in order to see the gill filaments, we need to remove the operculum. And those are the main things that you need to be aware of here. Obviously, you know, ethically try and source as much as possible. But the key things here are the removal of the exoskeleton in a insect and the removal of an operculum in the fish in order to see either the spiracles in the insect or the gill filaments within the fish. So there we have it, guys. That's your fish and insects and how they exchange gases with the surrounding environment. Good luck with your exams.